Hello, hi, um, thank you so much FCOM for having me. It's an honour and a pleasure. So I am Lucie Arnoux and I'm an illustrator. And I'm going to talk to you a bit about my creative process as part of uh, FCOM's Skillshare programme. Um, so, where to start? So, my job as a freelance illustrator is uh, very diverse. I get to do a lot of different things, like, uh, you know, one day I can be doing a mural and work on props and theatres, or work digitally on my computer, or make comics, or make children books. Uh, I, you don't have to be an illustrator like that, but I like being an illustrator like that because one, one thing that keeps me creative is juggling lots of projects at the same time. I think I, I always have at least five things going on, um, and I think a lot of people can relate to that, um, uh, to that dynamic because having a lot of different things to do means that if there's one you think, oh no, I really, I have no idea how to do that yet, you can procrastinate that one by doing something else that's equally uh, important and helpful, but it'll, it'll give you time to process what you think you're going to do for the other one. So in a way you're kind of tricking yourself into thinking, haha, I'm escaping a job, but really you're doing the other job, so it's all good. Um, so I find that really... Uh, really freeing and helpful and also it just keeps you making stuff you don't get stuck when you work from home and you're working on one thing it's if you're stuck on it it can become really frustrating um, so so at least you keep producing uh, and you don't sacralize the action of being creative uh, what do I mean by that it's a bit like um, if you draw, or maybe there's, uh, I think you, you can transpose that to a lot of different uh, forms of creativity. Um, if you have a sketchbook, uh, I teach drawing, so I always tell my students, you know, you should have a sketchbook, a sketchbook with you at all times, and you should draw stuff in it constantly. Um, but they get very precious about it, and they kind of, they want to curate their sketchbook so that every page is beautiful and it looks like a book and stuff. And um, that's really not good. You should just doodle and do things that don't matter and do things that are wrong or, you know, wrong or ugly or just that you think, well, oh, that was nothing. Because you need to make the act of creating not sacred and special. You need to make it an everyday thing. And sometimes something wonderful happens and sometimes it doesn't, but you need to have a chance of something wonderful happening, you need the process to um, keep going. So don't uh, don't make it too special, you know. If you have the uh, blank page, anxiety of the blank page, I don't know how you say in English. Uh, you know, just do a doodle on it. It's not white right anymore. Now you can do whatever you want. Uh, and actually, ode to doodling. Doodling is wonderful because it just, it kind of gets the rust out of your brain uh, and after a while the good stuff will flow and you might, I like doodling to a song or to an audiobook and fantastic ideas will just come up uh, because you let them. It's, it's nice to kind of detach the must, must have amazing idea and just um, draw. So that was my advice. Uh, if you if you want to draw or if you are trying to unlock creative potential uh, in a visual way, doodling is fantastic and don't take your sketchbook seriously. It is there to serve you. Don't show it to anyone if you don't want to. Maybe that's the key. Don't. Uh, this is purely for you. Um, and yes, something about things being for you and uh, getting pleasure out of creativity because that's that's what it should be right um, creativity should fulfill something within you hopefully could fulfill something and it should feel good um, and but that that's really hard to keep that when it's your full-time job 
obviously because not all projects are exciting, not all um, not all clients go in the direction that's going to be the easiest for you, and um, really you have to take other people's idea and make them your own, and that's really difficult. Uh, but if you're in that line of work, um, I would say try to try to keep a version of your job that brings you happiness on the side all the time. So even if you're going to, you know, working on projects that don't allow you much, or don't, it's not easy to find pleasure within it, uh, then draw in your own time, or play music in your own time, or film in your own time. Just make sure that the, the, the art, the craft, doesn't become just another job, because it's so hard to be a creative, and uh, it's so hard to become successful at it, so when you do, you don't want to look back and think, actually, I feel the same as if I did a non-creative job. Um, I know it's really difficult, but it's, it's good to keep in mind, am I enjoying this? Because I should be, because this is wonderful. You know, this is, um, how can I twist it to make sure I enjoy it? Um, I'm not saying that's easy, but I think it's, uh, it's good to keep that in mind. Uh, now, I'm going to try and take you through uh, my, my creative process. So as I said, it's, it's kind of difficult to just say, this is how I do things, because every project is different and stuff. But, uh, so this project is called the Museum of Now, and it's kind of an online interactive museum of objects that uh, people have submitted from their house, or, you know, it can be an object, it can be a memory, it can be uh, something. Um, and uh, and I did the homepage illustration for that, uh, which is a kind of Victorian cabinet of curiosities. Uh, the idea of, you know, a mishmash of wonderful things and odd objects coming together. Uh, and that was a really, really short uh, turnaround because we wanted it to be done during, kind of, yes, while lockdown was still happening, so that, yeah, people could still um, really enjoy that feeling of getting reconnected with others. So the way I proceeded creatively, um, because we had such a short turnaround, was to produce a lot of little thumbnails uh, showing ideas, elements I'd like to see in the illustration. Um, the beauty of thumbnails is that you can get your composition and your impact across um, instantly and really fast, and you can't get lost in details. So I always start by doing lots of little thumbnails and seeing what's the most impactful and clear way to go. The next step was uh, because we want an image that's full of wonderful things was to make kind of a list of all the objects I like to see in there and so that was a lovely little creative bit because I just had lots and lots of ideas obviously I didn't use everything uh, but that was a nice way of putting myself in the atmosphere of the drawing that I wanted with uh, taxidermy and uh, old uh, things that evoke memory and old things what we do after this is putting all these lovely ideas together and making a sketch. So this is the sketch I produced, which is in black and white, uh, just to get the idea of the lighting and the atmosphere we'd like. I sent this sketch in. Um, the clients wanted a few things changed. Uh, and after we all agreed, um, I decided on a color scheme. This is taken from the film Amélie. Uh, so uh, the warm colours of greens and reds, and this is the final result, uh, the homepage of our website. Um, I'm really proud of it, and it's the result of a wonderful teamwork. It was animated by uh, Joe, and uh, yes, I'm really happy with this project. And I guess the way I made it is quite typical, first thumbnails, um, then further research, a sketch, and a final full color drawing. I hope you've enjoyed this breakdown of my process and you'll want to uh, get to it yourself. <laughs>